Linux corrupts and absolute Linux corrupts absolutely. Okay, just kidding. Hi everybody, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino and in today's episode we will be looking once again at a light Linux distribution, in this case absolute Linux based on Slackware. Now that one is just perhaps a little bit more tricky to install than Linux Lite was, which was absolutely straightforward graphical installer and everything. So we shall do this more or less together. Let's see how this goes. Haven't yet done it. I have just discovered one little trick. It needs to be installed from a USB drive, though it does boot from a DVD. Yet my computer only can boot from the DVD drive. So I am using for the installation here both a DVD with an absolute Linux install image on it and moreover a USB key with the same. So without further ado, if I were having something different in the US map, I would now press one and then go through the keyboard map setup. I'll just omit that. I'll just press enter and then I'm going to say, oh my God, the synchronization here is terrible. I'm going to say auto setup on disk SDA. And I love that the prompt is do it. It's not okay. It's not something like that. It's do it. Okay, let's do it then. Uh, yeah, SDA is dedicated to absolute. So, now it just did the disk formatting. Ah, no, now it is doing the disk formatting, that is, okay. Uh, so, these are our partitions. Make sure the USB stick containing the Slackware package directory is inserted into a USB port. And then press enter to begin the scanning process. This is where you will fail. And trust me, I tried, if you try this only with a DVD. Let's see what it find it this time. Like the USB stick does exist. It's down right there. How much can you be scanning for a USB stick? I mean, it should be def sdb. Found it. Now it will be installing all packages and I shall hang on. So I do. And down there you see it already installing the packages. Oh, that's nice. We get a nice listing of what exactly it is going to install. CPIO, that, that's fine. Dialog, okay. A Lilo. Is this the Lilo boot manager? <laughs> that would be fun. So we see GOG, Gempower and so on, but we don't have any GCC or anything like that. Mind you, this is Slackware, so the package names in some detailed cases may be different from what one is used to. A thing may be packaged with another thing. Okay, so keyboard maps and console fonts. Does that really take longer than everything else? I mean, yes, it is 3.7 megabyte. Now comes a fat one, kernel firmware with 800 megabyte, like nearly 900. And then comes something funnily named kernel huge. <laughs> at 18 megabyte, a fully loaded SMP Linux kernel. And now come its modules. Yeah, they are a little bit bigger though, but this is a nice new kernel. Happy to see that. Okay. Nothing so surprising so far. Yeah, it uses, normally it should be using system, 
uh, 5 in it, not ah, this other terrible thing which Ubuntu switched to. Yeah, and that is how it will now apparently be going through. Oh, DOS to Unix, very good. How it will be going through its packages and installing them one by one. Yeah, DVD plus RW tools. Well, that's lovely. It's a pity it wouldn't just install from the DVD. LS open file is also fine. So we are having here apparently a rather nice package collection, but I'm not sure how long this is going to take. So I'm going to put you a little bit on break now and we will continue when it advances. Okay, I can't just avoid this. This is awesome. Look at this. We're getting a Lisp prepackaged. And before that it was showing... Uh, before that it was showing mpg123 so this is coming with really nice oh here's gcc this is coming with really nice preset command line programs so it is requiring even more space oh my god fortran yes ah oh, how did i not know about this distribution before anyway it comes it comes with everything i could ever wish so I'm surprised I never knew about this distribution, but I'm loving it already. It looks like I don't need to, to do much else. Like if, if that is what comes with it, geil. Ah, wie geil, as one would say in German. Uh, <laughs> so, so this is really having everything I might need in order to get a quite usable Linux system, no matter where I am. And this thing, which I told you in the previous a review of Linux Lite that it is important that you get something which is having a rather complete set of packages and, and this one is having an even larger footprint than Linux Lite in terms of disk space though not in terms of RAM so it needs more disk space but maybe less RAM to run this seems to be an even better match okay I am ready to forgive the insistence on a USB stick for the installation Let's see what else comes up. Okay, Lua. I mean, okay, that, that's 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 nice. Oh, but Nazm. Oh, this this is cute. Yeah, there's Pearl, but who's gonna cheer cheer Pearl? <laughs> mm. What is this Python two thing doing? Oh, please. But it does have Python three too. Okay. I'm cool with that. Not not very recent, but recent enough. Ruby 2. <laughs> it, it gets you covered in quite a lot of things. I mean, you have Assembler, like Nazm. You have, of course, you have Python, but, but you also have Fortran, and, and you have Lisp, and, and that is just great. <laughs> Oh, oh, Rust is coming too. <laughs> okay. Like, together with Ruby. This is like the different teams in, in the Hunger Games are appearing. It's just it's programming languages. But what the heck, man? Like, th this is a gigabyte big. You must really be loving Rust to, to put it in here. We don't only have Nazm, we actually also have Yasm. Okay. And that's what you see here on the lower line. That's something typical for Slackware. It is classifying the packages into alphabetical letter categories. And you can say what sort of set of things you would like to have. So... That is an entire, like, package subset. Ubuntu and the like don't have such a thing. It also comes with FFmpeg. It also has on board Lame, the MP3 audio encoder. LibDVD. 
CSS, libdvd not and libdvd read also there, in case you would like to be back in the early 2000s. The net PBM image conversion utilities are there too. I mean, I'm making jokes about DVDs, but you know, I actually have a whole collection being somewhat of a cineast. We have Java. We have VTE. And curl, which is certainly no surprise. I am, however, somewhat surprised to see Enet, the, the internet super server. I wonder whether I'll be able to configure Telnet from there. What? Wow, 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 wow. We are having links, the text only browser and nmap <laughs> i mean links and i admit my preferred cousin of it lynx are very useful if you are in a situation of extremely low bandwidth for us text only browsers they will only handle the text and completely ignore all images and other fancy stuff Oh, but how comfy. We're also getting Putti and Samba and WGET, which I like and expect, with which you can um, basically create auto automated answers to programs. Popularly, it has been used to automate logins and things like that. Of course, it handles everything in clear text. Okay, now that's really fun. It also has TWM. That's an antique Unix C window manager, which when you when you turn that on, it looks like you're back in the 80s, really. Which is why I like it. And it, it is already passed, but it also had X Edit. You know, X Windows default editor, which is rather nice. Now, this one I see for the first time. I have no idea exactly what it is, but it is interesting. Android file transfer for Linux. Okay. Nice to notice, of course, the presence of Audacity. As well as, of course, Calibre for handling ebooks. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I told you the package names are just great. Chromium ungoogled. Cool. This is more of a note to self. I see such a thing for the first time. Clip grab downloading video tool. Oh, I surely am interested. So all sorts of GNOME related programs we're having here like GIMP. But we're also having classics rarely seen such as GNUplot and GV as a PDF and PostScript viewer. We see Isomaster, Inkscape, Firefox, LibreOffice, Sane for scanning, but also remote desktop, Transmission as a BitTorrent client. That's lovely. And note to self, whatever is SSR, Simple Screen Recorder. We even have Zoom. Also XPDF and... and, and. XFCEs, XFBurn, and a couple of other things. We even have some Vivaldi browser. So now, please wait while we run MK font scale and MK font dir in your font directories. These are details we normally never see. Like something like for best results, font. FC cage should be run whenever fonts are added to the system. Or let's say I'll try to remember, okay? <laughs> In other words, never. And now we're getting a recommendation to make a USB boot stick. I would understand why that would make sense. If you have uh, some sort of coexistence with some Windows system, which has a bad tendency to override Linux bootloader, you might wish to do that. But I don't care, I'm just going to skip that. Oh my god! Setting up Lilo 
Ah, no, that's a name I haven't heard in a long while. I loved Lilo, though. I actually liked Lilo more than Grub. And now comes really the fun part. The selected services will be started at boot time. Pfft. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, what would I know? I don't really need a print server, but it would be the only one I would care about. Uh, no, that's maybe not entirely correct. I would be very tempted to turn on the BSD in a, in a to the daemon, but not right now. Packet forwarding would be fun in order to um, share the internet connection. What, what else do you have here? NFS. What? Okay, PCM, CEI, card services, no, certainly not. Samba. Yes, and SSH definitely, but it is turned on already. So, let's say I don't want anything beyond that. Like, I may think about Inet later on. Would you like to try out some custom screen fonts? Yes! What would happen if I... You may now test it by typing anything you want. Okay. Or a two on a line by itself to reject the current font. You know what? I'm going to play that through, but I'm not going to force you watch it. Okay, I mean, you have to look at this one. This looks so mega ridiculous. I love it. Very terminally. Oh my god. And now let's play as if it is a gentle typewriter. Now it can get a lot more like this. This is a bit more futuristic. This is comic, like similar to Comic Sans MS. And this is like the Joker scribbles on the wall. <laughs> imagine, imagine setting that as the console font. Really? No, we're not doing that. But this one I did like, so I think I'm going to go with that one. Hardware clock is set to local time. <sighs> what do I know? Okay, let's say no. Whatever. Please select one of the following time zones for your machine. You have to scroll down here for Europe. Uh, scrolling with the page down is faster. Europe, Vienna, or... Yeah, here it is. There's currently no password set. Would you like to set a root password? No. Gonna set it later if I want to. System configuration and installation is complete. You may now reboot your system. Excellent. So... Now it is important not to, to re-enter the setup, but to go for exit. And now I may physically unplug the absolute installation media USB stick from the USB port, which would also entail me removing it from the DVD drive, because otherwise it will boot straight from there next time. Yay, the DVD is out. We now have two DVDs, <laughs> one for Linux Lite, one for absolute Linux. And let's get rid of the USB stick just as well. Pressing then OK and reboot. Uh oh, I will need to fix something here for a moment in the BIOS. I prohibited booting from anything but the DVD because unfortunately it was really annoying me with not catching the DVD. The drive is a little bit shaky and then trying the hard disk. So Let's permit again the hard disk, okay. Now it should be able to boot just fine. So we are through the installation of Absolute Linux. We have seen some very exciting packages. And now, oh, Lilo loading. Ah, this is so late 90s. So we are now through the installation and I'm, I'm very curious what we shall C as a system. C 
So, it's none of those cutie boots where you don't see what is happening. You see everything. That's the way I like it, of course. This must be the console font I picked. It does look nice. Ah, yes, the encryption key generation. I remember that from FreeBSD when I was installing that 15 years ago. So, oh, user. Um, I don't think I named anybody. So, am I just root? Maybe I am. Okay, but <laughs> menu. Oh please, could you could you pick something less ugly than that? Really, <laughs> it's like it's idiot safe, but does it have to look that way? I still booted it extremely quickly. Like we went there immediately, and now we shall explore a bit. What do we have? So for audio, we have a CD ripper. Oh my God! If you find the CD, you may rip it. Uh, <laughs> Development, we are indeed well equipped. Okay, it's not really showing here, but we, we got a lot of compilers and stuff. I'm happy about, yeah, editors, that we are having the ebook viewer stuff here. So that's fine. Site, I haven't actually tried. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Okay, so I'm writing something. I'm closing it. Save changes to untitled. No. And now let's try that again. No. New file. All right. Likely I can change the way it looks. But this is something I may do later on. So we have an editor. Games. Not that I needed any, but okay. We have some form of chess, apparently, and other board games and also some crossword game. Well, nothing too much, which is a good thing. We're having a GPS map viewer. Not sure why, <laughs> but okay, it's welcome to be there. It's not as minimalistic as Linux Lite, if you notice. So regarding graphics, well, what do I need most of this from for? I mean, XPDF is a weird thing to put into graphics, but okay, I would have rather put it into Office. Sane is here, like our scanning program. GIMP and Inkscape, so for, for images and for vector graphics are here. We're having really a difference between full screenshot and screenshot area. So this looks all a little bit, uh, well, mixed, right? Now, what do we have here regarding the network? We're having an ungoogled Chromium browser. We're having Firefox and we're having Vivaldi and something which is called simply web browser. I really want to know what is a web browser. <laughs> also, we're having Putty and I really wonder what that will look like. Well, it looks pretty much like the Windows version. Okay. The main browser seems to be... I know the web browser might be just Vivaldi. All right. And we're having actually also an FTP tool, which is nice because many modern browsers no longer access allow you access to FTP. We are having in the office department the LibreOffice suite, which we shall try out in a moment. And video... What... What on earth is this? DVD sounds like a DVD player. MPV media player. Oh, well, would have taken VLC really, but it's okay. I understand why. And the simple screen recorder. Well, that that's nice. <laughs> so I realized that the screen has completely stabilized. It's absolutely not as blinky as under. As, as, as it was so far while installing, nor is it as bad as under Linux Lite. I don't know why, but this is beautiful. Okay, so utilities. You can create still a bootable USB if you want to. You can mirror an Android device. I mean, okay. 
an ISO master, the classical program to handle ISOs before using CD burn. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. So we are actually pretty well equipped. The situation is a little bit uh, topsy-turvy. Doesn't stop us though. Ah, no internet. Yes, I remember that little detail. Just give me a second. Fixed it. So we now do have a wired connection. My browser has been updated. Oh, that's lovely. Let's go to the BBC, our classical thing for checking out a new website with Vivaldi. Well, Texas woman injured after hawk drops snake on her. Okay, I admit this is low, but I am curious. <laughs> so this is how browsing works here. Ah, Wagner mercenaries operating in Niger. Okay. What I like about it is that it gives priority to text over pictures. So if anything isn't loading fast enough, uh, here about Oppenheimer, then it, you will at least first see the text and not have to wait all that much. Okay, so I am satisfied with the browser definitely. What I totally don't know is how the package management works here. Welcome to Vivaldi. Goodbye, Vivaldi. <laughs> so we're having here software updating. Oh, and the tool to set the default web browser because every browser wants to be the default web browser. Machine information. Yeah, sure. Well, not bad. We got our CPU. We got to see what kernel we have, our uptime resolution, and so on and so forth. And memory, a third gigabyte out of two I used. That's, that's okay. Well, and that pretty much is it. It, it looks very, ah, I removed software, idiot safe place for people like me. I must say, this is, this is not bad at all so far. It looks, of course, not as funky, not as cute as, as you may be expecting, like maybe, depending on, on your personal attitude, of course. But so far, I am, um, I must say, while it looks quirky, it also looks usable. So look at this. The design is, of course, ridiculous. Each package name is giant and there are lots of empty spaces. And, and if I click on anything, it, it's not filled with the package info. So I don't know what is doing what. But I have something. All right. I understand what this is. Installed package list. Select the package to remove. Oh, but I don't want to remove anything. And we're not doing that here that way. <laughs> what does the terminal look like? Terminal looks fine. Now, closing the terminal for a moment. What happens if I want to change the background? You must open the menu over an item. What? What is this? Uh, Arox, about Arox options. Maybe. File a windows, drag and drop, menus, colors. Okay, changing the background, maybe. <laughs> Here are the color schemes, maybe more of a topic. That, of course, is less than optimal. All right, what else did I see here? The control center. And system tools. Gosh, why is this so unnecessarily complex? But let's see the control center. It appears reasonably fast and eventually shows its contents. 
Going to the desktop, I can adjust the screen gamma. Wow. And set the screen refresh rate. It should have only one value. Yes, exactly. That That's my monitor. Set the system font. Pff, not that I care. Ach, go. And screen timeout. Well, I increase that. I don't want actually any screen timeout, but it's okay. Minutes. What else could it be? If not minutes. It is minutes. All right, 60 minutes. And adjust the screen gamma. Oh, but I can't change the background. And I have to have a lonely guy on a hill. Ah. Oh, I get it. When I click here, it's backdrop. Oh my gosh. So, what will we go for? This looks nice. But it doesn't do anything. <laughs> oh my gosh. What, what are the smoky mountains? That looks fine too. And charcoal sky. That looks a little bit like madness would look, I would say. And what is wired? Oh, just gets all the weirder. So, so we're going to take this one, but how? Set backdrop, stretch. And I shall drop an image here. Okay, I'm taking this one. Warm. Ah, perfect. And I'm just going to close it. So now I have managed to change the desktop background. Now I read somewhere that Slackware nowadays is offering a tool called SlappedGet, which is trying to emulate apt-get, slapped get search lisp. Perhaps you want to run an update. Yeah, totally. So slapped get seems to be indeed present and we shall update the package repositories. Let's see how smooth that will run because on Linux Lite that did not go smooth at all for me. Pressed Control C by mistake and I'm noticing something not too great. I don't see how I can copy here anything. I don't have that menu. And upon closer inspection, this is just a pure X term. All right, do we have any other terminal? All right, learn something new. X term doesn't have access to the normal cut and paste buffers of the operating system. So I have to start it apparently in a weird special way. Maybe I can do that from down there in order to, uh, how, how do I do this though? Yeah, okay, maybe from here in order to have them. So if I were to say X term LS minus XRM and then X term star select to clipboard is true okay and now do I not have anything still don't have a thing so that totally didn't work I mean it colored the root that that's like lovely but Ah, 
wait if I color it and then right click it and then do controls control C and then do shift insert then it will take it okay so marking things and then right clicking on the mark thing is copying these things and that's awesome let's try what I can paste them here and then I can also paste so yes by default X term does not have a possibility to allow you to copy paste in any normal fashion but with this command it is possible. Now one may of course ask whether it was a real priority to put in there 800 megabytes of Rust or just a decent terminal. But so it is. If you haven't selected the software yourself, so it will be every time. Yeah, so I managed to update the package repositories. Now... Huh. Regarding Lisp, my, my luck has ended here. I am only having Clisp, which is nice, but I'm going to get Closure CL2 anyway. If, I, if I'm looking for basic. Gosh, we're having all sorts of things, but nothing that would be too usable. Anyway, though pip install pc basic not that it is 100% necessary but should the possibility exist a very lovely well then let's try it out pc basic And segmentation fault. Oh, come on. But it should be starting perhaps that way. Yes. <laughs> so it does not start the graphical fashion. Not that I would care all that much. But if I say 10, uh, 10 print hello and tell it run, then that's what it does. So that works reasonably well. Not ideally, but reasonably well, right? And that's pretty much it. Well, what's the verdict then? I would say it looks a little bit more geeky and more unusual than many other Linux distributions you can pick out there. It is also having more content you saw what we got installed we got installed not just gcc we got installed everything from rust to lisp to everywhere and therefore as a lonesome geek that certainly is the best distribution but is it the best distribution for your parents well depends on their tolerance for geekiness right <laughs> so let, let's get here closure common lisp yeah, please. Then let's get it from GitHub. And let's get it for Linux x86. Very good. Uh, save as. Yeah, let's put it on the desktop. What's the issue about the desktop? Is this, is this somehow difficult? Then we're getting some weird download statistics, you know, like immediately <laughs> things look a little bit strange. Yeah, thank you, Vivaldi. You hopefully did well. Though I don't see it on the desktop now. Maybe I would have to refresh the desktop. I don't even know where I am here. Maybe I'm at home. Maybe not. Uh, okay. Ah, but there is CCL. That's fine. 
So double clicking it, what happens then? Okay, I'll close this, yes. Yes, this thing, and then what? Extract here, yes, please. So now I'm having, apparently I have to single click here, things. Not double click because I'm otherwise going from elsewhere. Okay, and then I am having here this. Are you sure you want to run this? Yes, I am sure. Uh, but maybe I want to run it in a terminal. Nice, the terminal is in the correct path. So, only need to figure out what it was. So, Alex 86 CL. 64 and closure common lisp is working so i have something apart from c lisp now speaking of it can i have a different terminal please up search term x term blah blah is, is there something like A better terminal I right now don't see. Well, then I maybe just will have to live with this one. <laughs> so that's what I mean with quirky. It is extremely fast. It is as fast as it gets, I believe, on this ancient machine. And if I now open LibreOffice Writer, let's see how fast it will be in handling that. But it also requires you to be a little bit more certain about what you're doing. So the verdict would really be very nice lightweight distribution, but maybe more for someone leaning to be more into computers. And With that, I would rather say, if I would have to install something to my mom, so to say, I would rather go for Linux Lite so far and, and fix these network problems and fix the package source issues rather than maybe like serve this sort of thing. The one should not underestimate her, like once I hid the terminal in a Linux installation which I had made for her and my dad. And I didn't want it, you know, that they are somehow disturbed by clicking this and having a terminal appear. And she found it. And she commented, what a very nice terminal there exists. Strange that it was hidden so much. <laughs> so in this moment I knew, okay, maybe not underestimate my parents, right? So, with that, this review is done and over. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope at least the installation of Absolute Linux has been here with satisfactorily documented. I hope to greet you here soon again, best as regular viewers. Hope to see you soon. Until then, have a wonderful time. And from me, goodbye.